match this morning everyone and i'd like to welcome you all to our unit uh, on stoichiometry so this is practically our second module which deals with uh, quantities in chemical formulas and chemical equations all right so if you've noticed we are on the second part of the semester already so the questions that we will be a uh, asking ourselves are what are the evidences of that matter has changed and how do we quantify them so this deals with chemical reactions and stoichiometry already all right now oh uh, i'd like you to ponder on this how do you know that you understand something right so maybe you understand something because of the familiarity okay if you always see something or someone altogether but in science, you can also know something. We will be able to determine if we know something, if we can measure it. Okay, so when you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you are quantifying it, then you know something about it. Okay, so for our first learning target, uh, learning targets rather we will be dealing the, with the most basic uh, concepts so for now we will be calculating the average atomic mass of elements based on the relative abundances and masses of their isotopes okay and characterize elements based on their average atomic masses right so when you talk of stoichiometry just uh, the simplest definition is is that it deals with the numerical relationships and proportions of elements and compounds Okay, it's, it deals with numeric uh, relationships in chemical compounds, so that's why you have chem uh, quantities in chemical formulas, and numerical relationships in chemical reactions. All right. So first, we'll have the relative atomic mass. This is also called our average atomic mass. Okay. So it's the weighted average value of the masses of isotopes in a naturally occurring sample of an element. So let's say, for example, we have here a uh, lithium. Okay. Lithium six, lithium seven, and lithium eight. When we were discussing uh, isotopes, we know very well what six. Uh, represents or seven or what eight so uh, remember the general formula x a and then z okay where a represents our mass number okay which is practically our number of protons plus our number of neutrons okay so n zero because neutrons have a zero charge right now z here represents the atomic is our atomic number so that is number of protons all right so when you try to look at the isotopes of lithium, you'll notice that they have the same number of protons but different num different mass numbers, okay? Different A's. So that is because in a naturally occurring sample of the element, there are isotopes, there are elements of the same kind but different number of neutrons, okay? And then our goal now is to quantify or to get the average of the isotope such that we will be able to get the relative atomic mass okay so the unit the unit for the relative atomic mass is amu or in shorter forms you have here the greek letter mu all right mu so that is why maybe in the module you've noticed that there was a small u there Okay, which is practically the same thing, mu or u. Okay, so in the periodic table, this is our atomic mass, and we'll get to see how we can actually solve them from relative abundances. Okay, so we'll deal first with this problem. Okay, and let me switch a mod. Uh, all right, so in here we have a sample problem from Silverberg. Okay, detailing how uh, so how we can get the relative atomic mass of silver using their isotopes. Alright, so let's have drawing first. Okay, 
and then we have this uh, game plan also our schematic diagram okay so if we want to get the relative atomic mass we have first to get the mass of each isotope and then here multiply by fractional abundance of each isotope so we'll be dealing with a fractional abundance later on and the portion of atomic mass from each isotope right so in here uh, silver which uh, with an atomic number of 47 has 46 known isotopes but only two occur naturally okay so we focus on those naturally occurring isotopes so we have 107 ag and 109 ag okay now given the ma the following mass spectrometric data we can calculate the ma atomic mass of silver now take note that uh, if you've noticed the mass numbers the mass numbers here are basically rounded off rounded off values of the rounded off values of the mass for each particular isotope let's say for example if you have ag107 then the mass is 106.9 which is practically 107 right in here 108 Point 0.9 we can round it off to 109 and use it as our uh, mass number all right okay so now we start with our problem solving okay so again we have 107 we now have the atomic masses for each particular isotope our goal is to get the relative atomic mass all right so First is we have to multiply each mass by the relative fraction or the fractional abundance rather of each isotope. So in here, we are given the percent abundances. So meaning to say in a naturally occurring sample, for example, if you have a pie graph, okay, you have a certain number of a certain number of silver this is exa exaggerated. So there's a certain number of 107 AG the AG 107 and you have AG 109 okay and then AG or silver 107 is 51 percent of the naturally occurring samples while silver 109 is only 48 percent so what then is the relative atomic mass for the at for silver so in that we can actually get we can obtain the fractional abundance based on the percentage abundance and what do we have to do is just divide everything divide the percent abundances by 100 okay so we report it as if it were uh, not in a percentage anymore so fractional abundance here so that's 51.84% divided by 100, you have 0 0.5184, okay? You notice how we just move the decimal point twice to the left, okay? Same thing here, 0 0.4816, all right? Now that we have the fractional abundances, all we need to do is to get the relative atomic mass Ah, sorry of silver so we just have to uh, get the contribution of each isotope so for example you have for 107 ag okay i'm just writing this down for us to be guided huh? we have the following mass of the isotope 106 point nine zero five zero nine now we usually include all the digits that are presented in the in the problem so as to minimize errors and that is mu okay atomic mass and then we multiply it with their fractional abund abundance so zero point five one eight four okay since we divided with it with 100 then there's no more unit right and then we add the contribution of silver 109 so 109 ag so that's 
times 0 0.4816 okay and then if you get the if you multiply each term and get uh, let's do this step by step if you multiply 106.9 times 0 0.515814 you get 55 okay 4.42 amu from ag107 and ag109 that's 52.45 amu all right and so we have the relative atomic mass as 107.87 mu Okay, or 107.87 AMU. Okay, so this now is the relative atomic mass for silver. Okay, so this one, the relative atomic masses are actually reflected in the periodic table. So if we find it here, okay, silver has 107.87 mass in this area okay so practically we are uh, on the right track a while ago right so meaning to say you can use the number of isotopes and their percent abundances to identify specific elements which is basically what is in your module okay so if you look at your module here in the atomic masses activity you are asked to determine the element which has uh, which has the following isotopes all right so and then based on the atomic relative or the average atomic mass then you are going to find the identity of the element all right so that's it for atomic mass uh, there there will be a second exa example video later okay for now you can stretch or take a break